Billy D here again with another one of our amazing Cal Jam, pre-Cal Jam Skypes with somebody that I've come, become very close with, a really good friend of mine, uh, Dr. Danny Bai. Say hi to, say good morning to everybody or afternoon or wherever you're getting this. Good afternoon and from Chicago. Hey, Billy, how you doing, In brother? Chicago! I, I should have worn my Sox hat today for you. Even though I'm not a baseball fan, I just like hats. That's what happens when you don't have any hair, bro. Uh, yeah, man. So what are you bringing to Cal Jam this year? Oh, uh, dude, um, what I got cooking right now for Cal Jam is uh, pretty awesome. The, I'm going to be talking about the real reason why this profession that is so freaking awesome, I know you agree with it, um, why this profession, as awesome it is, as it is, is not really resonating with the mass population um, and why we're not reaching the numbers and we're not um, getting the... Uh, people to have their eyes opened up to what true chiropractic actually is. And there's a, there's a really, really specific reason for that disconnect, and I'm going to be able to lay it all out there on your stage, so I can't wait to share that stuff. Cool. And I, I should have really introduced you before. Uh, I became introduced to you through uh, Dr. Brad Glowacki, and you guys have this program called Everest Coaching, which is really just a one and two day program that you do on a weekend where people can right. come and learn how to do a day one, day two, like frigging no other. You're like the full ninja after doing that thing. And I've been to it three times because I have a thick skull. But I mean, I like going to seminars. I love learning. I like perfecting on perfection. And I like to always better myself. And I like to be current. And your stuff is the most cutting edge way of addressing and teaching people and getting people to actually, I mean, close might be a bad word for some people, but if you're not closing them, they're dying or going to medical doctors. Yeah, Tell me about, a little bit how that program evolved and, and what, you know, you know, just how it's really affected so many doctors across the country. Oh, yeah, cool, man. Uh, it started because I was the worst at uh, explaining chiropractic uh, correctly to people. And um, the story that I tell, I, I got in front of 120 some odd teachers, 70 of them made it into my office, and only nine of them said, yeah, I want, to, I want you to be my chiropractor. So if you do the numbers there, man, you got, <laughs> there's something missing. Um, and that hit me early on, because I was, I was actually counting my chickens before they hatch. You know, I thought I had it all figured out. And when I realized that I wasn't doing something correctly in terms of uh, translating what chiropractic was into the language of the patient in front of me until I had to, until I figured that out I knew that I was going to be in a world of hurt so uh, so there started my whole uh, journey on how to how do I take this thing called chiropractic which is you know limitless and how do I break it down and chuck it down to a point where the person across from me in their very limited knowledge of you know you know Billy health in general you know right. uh, how do they how do I get them to say you know what yeah, you know, I, I want that. And not only do I want that, but I want you to be the one that provides that for me. And not only do I want you to be the one that provides it for me, I'm going to pay out of pocket so that there's even exchange. You know, so that's why, um, you know, we developed this because we realized, hey, uh, generally speaking, chiropractors, I think, don't have a problem with the technique side. They don't generally have a, a problem with... I think some of the students do these days. Well, the students, yeah. I'm talking just generally, you know, the, the docs in practice. But one thing they were really lacking is a, a, a way for them to communicate what they do uh, to the patients in front of them. And I'll be, on, I'll be honest with you, and you know, Billy, you know, we've been doing this for two and a half years, and the response is absolutely overwhelming. And Barry and I are absolutely humbled um, by the docs that are, you know, the docs that, that really humble us are the docs who've been in practice like 20, 30 years, you know? Like me? They, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to give you, I don't want to give out your age, brother, but... Um, and they come back to us and sit us down and say, you know what, I, you know, I thought I had it all figured out, uh, but in, after 20, 30 years in practice, I realized that not only have, has, has, has I changed, but the community and the marketplace has changed. And that's right. something that we can't ignore, you know? Right. You know, and the biggest thing for me that I've learned from it, and, you know, I'm a really good student, and I, I take this stuff, and I study it, and I, go, and I, and I, I read it and, and learn it. And but then it, and I apply it. And but the thing that I learned the most was for me is I wasn't doing my consults myself, and I wasn't doing my exams myself. And since I've got back into doing that and just bonding with that patient and listening to them, and I, I've really, it, I think the bonding part of it has really made the biggest impact 
uh, I don't want to be giving some of your uh, clues away, but that the flexion extension really is a it's a big way to demonstrate to people not only the, the misalignment component to it, but also the restriction on range of motion. Uh, can I talk about other things? Sure, man. And I mean, the thing is, they got to go to your seminar. I mean, it's not yeah. like you're going to learn it from me They're just not, talking about yeah. it. And, then, learn and it. then the life effect, which I've always done, but I never did it the way you guys teach it to really bring it out and set goals and targets for people so that, you know, they see they see past just the pain side of it. They see that how their life is really being destroyed by their problem, and right. it really puts their health and and their and the problems that they've got into in, into perspective, and it creates that value for the, the care that you're going to provide. And and then you know for somebody in, in my office to to put down twenty seven hundred dollars to get a new to get their life back to me seems like a drop in the bucket when you like go drop that on friggin you know, their tranny and their car goes, they don't even think twice about something like that. Right, right. And a tranny and car is a piece of metal that they're going to probably have, you know, at the most six or seven years and they're going to get a new car. But we're talking about their life, their spine, their nervous system, and just their overall just capacity to live life. And, yeah. and those are the things that I really learned from your program. Cool. Right on, brother. And that's exactly what we want to get across. And, you know, it, 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 people know that. Like before you, I met you, you... You know, you know those concepts, but when someone actually gets to lay it down for you step by step, it really changes the game because now you know it conceptually and you know it from a, I know you're a science guy, so you get this, but you know, when you break it down and you look at the statistics or like uh, the strategies and the formula, and then you, you go from the micro to the macro and you're like, holy cow, I've been working in this mi macro. And when you break it down, it's just really exciting because you, you get to see why it works, you know? Right. And the thing that's super cool, too, and this is the stuff that I've never been taught in any other seminar because I've been everywhere, dude. I mean, after right. 30 years of this stuff, I've been through beginning with Lannis and Ward to, you know, Schofield to Body by God to Total Practice Management to, you know, you name it. Mm -hmm. I could keep going Rademacher and uh, I bet, but I, you know, I like to go learn and get little bits and pieces and, and come back and, and, and implement things that resonate with what I do. But uh, I forget where I was going with this. Uh, so where was I going with this? That's what happens when you get a little older. You start talking. <laughs> hey, hey, dude, it's part of your charm, man. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> but what was I talking about before that? Um, what I got from it. Yeah, what you got from... Oh, I, I know. It was when you get the, you know, when you see all their minimizations and you, you can start to read that beforehand and all their objections and how you guys come back with just like answers like that to their objections and be able to recognize it. That is something that I never, I, I don't know if that was you or Barry because I know Barry's got a pretty big strong sales background, right? Mm, yeah, he does. Yeah. yeah. And that's really, you said it, that's the bottom line. It's it's sales training for the chiropractor. Right. And, you yeah. know, and if, if people have problems with that sales thing, which I think it, it is, if for some reason, it's, it's got that dirty word to it. But, right. I mean, if, 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 like I said earlier, if you're not selling your package of health care, they're going to go be sold that friggin' bullshit paradigm of medicine, which is drugging stuff to death, cutting organs yeah. out of bodies, sticking yep. needles in your kids, putting them yep. on drugs through life. Yep. So you it's either it. you sell them or somebody else is going to sell them. And chiropractors need to step up to the plate and actually have some faith in what they do, but also have the, have the skills to be able to recognize the psychology of how to sell to people and understand how people think, especially coming from a situation where people are sold the bullshit paradigm, paradigm to begin with. Yeah, and, and which brings up a great point because... Uh, you know, you talked about faith and you talked about, you know, having the passion and, and the certainty. And you, we can, even if someone without the passion and the certainty for chiropractic, we can still teach that person how to, the skills to sell it, right? Right. But unfortunately, you and I both know what happens to those people. They burn out. Their, their, their lifespan in the profession is going to be finite, which is why, Billy, when I talk about and I think about CalGym, that, my friend, is the thing that fuels all the skills that people and the doctors in this in this world are going to need. So check it out. You know, you got the principles and the passion and all the the spiz that surrounds this lovely profession, which obviously you get at Cal Gym nowhere else. I don't care what anyone says. Okay? No, and there's then, nothing. There, it's unparalleled. Absolutely, I agree. 
And then you take that spiz and that passion and the, and the, and the purpose. And then you couple with that a solid skill set to reach as many people as possible and them to have for them to have say yes, dude, does it get any better than that? And that's exactly why, you know, holding hands with you on this journey, my friend, is absolutely like a match made in heaven. So I, I yeah. just can't tell you how and awesome Brad's, it is. I, I call it kind of like a triad. Brad's really good. He's got the, you, know, you got to go out and find him, too. You got to learn how to bring him into the office. Yep. And as I've gotten older, which I have, I don't want to really see, and I was talking with my brother Matt last night, I mean, I'm not into seeing 80 new patients anymore, I mean, it's not, it's not, <laughs> I, I, I don't yeah. want to see boatloads of people, and the funny thing is, since I've been doing your program, it's not funny, it's reality, and Matt and I said this last night, because we had band practice last night, which we'll talk about with, him, with you in a minute, uh, but the reality is, we're seeing less people, but we're making more money. Right, and I and it's not that I want to see less people, but it's just when you get older, it's just seeing a thousand a week doesn't appeal to me anymore. Exactly. And I'm by the way, Billy, you're not the only chiropractor in this world. You know, that's the a lot of docs want to see huge numbers. I mean, they're they're acting like they're the only chiropractor in this world, which is maybe they feel that way. I don't know, but right. I know that if I don't see as many numbers as I want to see, because I get you, I know that. I am in contact with, with a vast number of people that are thinking just like me, like you, all the guys at uh, the Docs at Cal Gym, their staff, their spouses, their community. You know, this is a team effort here. Nobody does this by themselves, you right. know? So, uh, and I think you get that, which is why another thing that I love when I go to Cal Gym, I feel that, like, that, that community, you know, like, hey, I'm not alone in this. And right, if right. I, it's I totally a here. You know, I say I knock on someone's door, and you know they're on the. I'm on the phone with them. They're helping me out, and I know that's not just me. I already hear from the grapevine, like, hey, I had this problem. I met this guy at Cal Jam. Hey, what is, you know? And everyone works together, and um, and that's 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 what we got to do, man. We we got to work together at this thing. No one, you know, no one's going at it this alone. You right. know that. And, and, and the big objective is it's not for us. It's for the world and it's for I mean because you and I know it and and, and, I, and I don't know if most chiropractors well some chiropractors know it, but I don't think the students who taught this that literally every person on the planet needs a chiropractor just like everyone needs a dentist I mean if a den if, if, if everybody goes to a dentist for their friggin teeth which yeah they're important but they pale compared to your spine and your nervous system and uh, I think I posted on your PhD page the other day I mean, I'm not a big person on just doing sectionals on a person's complaint because I think the whole spine works in unison. It works together. It works as a yes. unit in, in, in this holistic manner. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, why would you just take pictures of somebody's low back and neglect things like their neck? They may have stage two, like, decay in their neck. And if you're not taking pictures of that, because are we just pain-based? Are we there to improve the function of the spine and, and prevent spinal degeneration, which I know we can, and that's why Deed's speaking this year because I, I think his work is unparalleled oh. and well-researched. Yeah. And again, I want to bring like a whole, you know, the philo philosophical side to it, but I also want to bring in the science, the supports, the philosophy, because, you know, we can keep talking about, you know, the power that made the body heals the body, but let's bring in the current science that supports what we do. That's why in Chestnut's going to be talking about the neurology of the subluxation. And I want, you know, we all know this stuff, but I want the general public to see that this stuff is not just BS, you know? Right. Yeah, man. And uh, and I with that lineup that you just said, and um, I, I went through the, uh, the speaker lineup, but I think, I mean, I know that that is, if, you, if we can get that message out to the mass population. It, it, it is a hook, line, sinker. There's no problem. I think that's what's going to happen. Right. So uh, I can't wait for that. And the other thing is, yeah, you've got to have a palette. You have to have a, a menu there that's going to interest people. If, we, if we're going to say, oh, we're going to talk about subluxation for two days, right. you're oh, going to get chiropractors. So yeah. that's why we're hitting geoengineering. We're hitting... You know, I got fully raw Christina, who's a full-on 100% bay, but she's also lives her lifestyle. I mean, I don't agree with it 100%, but I mean, yeah, but the, the, you don't you don't have to agree with it 100%. No, no, that's the I, thing. I'm not a vegan. You know, I mean, I I do eat meat. I'm, I'm I lead more of a paleolithic kind of lifestyle, and you know, I try to diversify what we're talking about to not only educate chiropractors. Chiropractors need to learn some of this stuff too. I mean, we've got a lot of unhealthy chiropractors in our profession 
And, you know, a lot of it's sh just shitty lifestyles over time that create the problems that we have. But, I mean, for us to get our message to the world, we just need to get out of our own little preaching to the choir thing and start really getting out and delivering the message. Yeah, you got that right. And there is a way to do that. And unfortunately, most chiropractors know how to speak to other chiropractors. And it's like we're trying to sell each other, you know. So, you know, we got to learn how to get out there and... Um, and, and speak the community's language, and I think that's really what we're missing right now. Now, if people want to find out about your coaching program, what's the best way to do that? Uh, yeah, we got a website, uh, everestcoachingsystems.com. We're all on there. We're, we're all over Facebook. Uh, we're not really tough to find, and we're very accessible. You know, uh, We are in practice as well, just like you do. That's really. a so, super big point, too, dude. Yeah, uh, so we're, we're well-grounded, and so... When we talk to a lot of docs, uh, you, you know, you can tell if someone's been in practice or not in practice because after a while you kind of lose touch of, of, you know, what's out there. So, um, again, we're very accessible and, uh, um, you know, it, I just, seeing my people every day, seeing my patients every day, really one of the things that just keeps me grounded in this thing. Well, uh, yeah, so. and then you actually get to practice this stuff. And it, even like last night when I was when hanging out with Matt, and I love hanging out with Matt because he's a smart kid too. And... We were talking about even going to a step where even we start pre-qualifying people on day one. We're trying to master, because I don't know, when you do a lot of public speaking, you're going to get tire kickers in there, and we just try to figure out, I don't want to waste my time doing a full-blown exam on somebody taking x-rays and having to come back for a day two if there's no way in hell they're going to be able to even afford anything, you know, so... I mean, I mean that happens. I don't know, I mean, I don't know what the socioeconomic condition is out in Chicago, but, I mean, you can do the best day one and have somebody come in that's freaking literally broke. They're, there's no way. I mean, they, they're, they're str you know, at strain to feed their family. Right. And it's not that I don't care about those people, but it's just I don't have time to waste anymore. And I don't want to waste their time, number two, by having to come back for a day two or spend all the time on a day one, which is not a lot of time. But, right. you know, and that's another thing that I've learned from your program. I've really, really trimmed down a lot of what we're doing. And I just sent my two CAs to Southwick's program, which they oh. they loved it. And I was surprised that they loved it because, you know, sometimes when you work at this office, they probably think they know it all. But, again, it was more <laughs> streamlined and it cut out all the excess BS that we have a tendency to be overly uh, verbose with. Exactly. Hey, and what you just said is exactly how the general population thinks, too. They want all the fat cut out. They don't want to be BSed. Right. They don't want to have. They don't want to jump through hoops and go on a merry-go-round. Right. You know. So, um, and a lot of, and I, I think obviously you know this, but uh, a lot of the things that we teach are things that we teach. We want docs to do, knowing the psychology and the perceptions of the the general population right now in 2014, right. Right. not what it was in 1970, because obviously you know the people now were so different than they were even. Oh, they're so savvy, dude. But well, that, that's the good thing, though, because most people are burnt on the, just the whole medical paradigm. I mean, they're really? looking yeah, for something it. different. It, I mean, it's so, I mean, I don't understand why people struggle in this profession because everybody is running for medicine. They're looking yeah. for an answer. And if you can articulate what we do on a level that people can understand it, and, yeah, sometimes I have to mirror. I mean, I, I really try to mirror a person's personality, and I try to, you know, try to just in a way – communicate the way they communicate so that I can get the message through to them, right. whether they're an analytical or an amiable or whatever it is. I don't know what the, all the terms are. I just know how, I know how to blend with people is probably what right. it is. Okay? Yeah, know, absolutely. You yeah. can call it whatever scientific term. <laughs> now, just one other thing. Uh, what, what do you, what's your idea on that pre-qualification on the day one? Or do you think that's something or? Um, you know, for, for me, um, I do a lot of speaking, obviously, you know, but I don't do a ton of outside speaking in my own community. Like you said, I, I don't want uh, an 80 new patient month, you know, so most of my new patients are referrals. I yeah, think and if you've got a referral, so, it's a slam dunk, dude. Yeah, so they are already pre-qualified. That's right. how I see it. So right. I would say 90% of my new patients are referred. Um, you know, once a, once a year, I might do a one big thing where I do a thing for the local teachers and, you know, we'll get like 60 new ones in two months. You know, that's like the big thing. That pretty much takes care of my marketing for the year. I mean, but, you know, looking at my practice and even looking at yours, you know, it's, it, we're not typical practices, you know, because we've got a lot going on. But in terms of pre-qualifying, if, if I were to do that, yeah, it would, 
you know, Brad does a great job teaching that too. And you know, how to how to um, uh, what is it? Qualify your leads before you even go into something. Right. And right. that itself is a is an art. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, but you won't know it until you've done it a couple of times. You come home with with leads are just uh, less than stellar. You know. Right. Uh, but everything's a learning opportunity, as you know. So you know, for the young docs that are listening, you know, you just do everything. It, it might, if I was my first year in practice, I would not say no to anything that prevented me from going out there and you know, speaking to people right. or what have you, you know? Right. Uh, but as, you know, in, for the guys who've been doing this 20, 30 years, you know, you just start to, you know, but my dad always told me, um, you know, your emotional energy is finite. I mean, obviously he didn't say it in English, you know, but uh, that, that was the best translation I got. How did he say Japanese? <laughs> yeah, you mean in Chinese? I thought you were or Japanese. You mean, oh, you are no. Chinese. Are you no, Korean? No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just messing with you. You're not Indonesian, I know that. I'm hanging around with those dudes all I don't, We all look alike, I hear you. Yeah. But, so, uh, but that's true, though. Like, you only have a certain amount of energy, you know? And, and when it starts to run low, it's, you, know, you really want to um, make sure that all of your actions, and even your words right now, uh, carry the most amount of uh, mileage. You know? right. So, right. Uh, but I agree with that for sure. All right, so you're jumping up on keyboards this year, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's going to be a blast. I'll tell you something. I'm more nervous about, about that than doing my talk. You better not yet. be nervous. Come on, you're a pro, right? Yeah, I used to do it. You um, used to play keyboards yeah. back when? Going through school or what? Yeah, I used to play keyboards in, uh, in high school. I was in a band and then in college. Um, I didn't want to be in a band, but it was just a really easy, no way for me to make some extra go. So I played in a, uh, a Bon Jovi cover band in undergrad. Wow. Uh, yeah, I it was pretty neat. And, yeah, the lead singer was a dead ringer for him. It, it, John Bon Jovi. He looked just like him. He sounded like him. He's actually a comedian. He's a he's a professional comedian right now. But he does a lot of impersonations and stuff. And the guy, so you're kind of like a comedian too. Yeah, I, I learned a lot throughout the years. You know, you got to keep it. You got to keep it funny, or else you start losing your audience. You know oh, how yeah. that goes. Your so. seminar. And I don't even want to call it a seminar. I don't know what to call it, but like I don't like to call it Cal Jam a seminar. To me, it's more right. like a freaking experience. It's yes. a party is what mine is. I mean, I, whether you whether you like parties or not, I mean, I don't drink, and I, I mean, pretty much sober 100%. I party on water, but I, to me, a, a party is a celebration of people getting together that enjoy and love what they do. And, yes. And, and it's, it's just so, that's the other thing about Cal Jam, is it's, it's all people that coming together that, you know, where it's hugging, and it's like a reunion. Yeah. But, but the thing about your program is it's it's fun, and it's it's it's... At the same time, you know, you're learning some stuff that's super, super important, but you guys have humor there, and, and you know, Barry's a friggin' comedian, too, and both of you guys put on an awesome program, and I highly recommend it to anybody. Even if you've been in practice like me for 30 years and you think you know it all, you're going to learn some stuff that's going to make you, it's going to sharpen the sword as a little. As oh, no say. doubt, no doubt about it. And, like, bringing back to the, the fun factor, you know, uh, when we started doing this, we realized that this... You know, we had to, because the average person right now is so inundated with the, uh, with the lack of time and, and we're just impatient generally, right. uh, we had to make it so that people could come and enjoy it because I learn things when I'm enjoying it. And you too, I know you're the same way. Right. If it's, if it's freaking boring, dude, I'm out of there, you know? Right. Well, you're, uh, and, it's I, not, not physically but mentally out of there mentally, too. Right. 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 You so, just disconnect. Absolutely, and which is why, again, you know, when when um, at Cal Gym, you know, I'd love to say I go for the info, but personally, I don't just go for the info. The info that I get from Cal Gym are, is is essentially my the value add. The real reason I go to Cal Gym is because it's a party, like you said, it's fun. You know, as soon as I land and it's Cal Gym, because like you know, I'm in Orange County a lot, as you know, but when I land for Cal Gym, it's a little different feel. Right. Um, in the the party atmosphere, <clears throat> I'm not a crazy big party either, but Everyone's there to have a good time. I was teaching you some tricks, though, at Spaghettinis, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> some of the old you tricks did. that I, I used to employ. Exactly. That's, that's, that's what Those I Those are probably not good tricks to teach people, but... <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, oh. once you become like... And I'm not trying to be a... You know, I'm not trying to preach at people. I'm just knowing I went down that road as deep as you want to go. And that's right. why I don't do it anymore. But it, it's fun that you can joke about the things that you did in the past, so... Oh, no. If people yeah. have issues with me, I don't really give a shit anymore. Right. As you get older, you give a lot. You, you don't really. And people tell me to grow up all the time. It's okay. I'm 56. If you want me to grow up, I, maybe someday. But hey, another Billy, thing I wanted to say. Billy, 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 
Yeah. Move your uh, move your screen down so your because your your face is getting cut off there. No, the other way. There we go. Perfect. I, I do sure that purposely. That I do that purposely so people can't see me. <laughs> they're, they're, Not, we're, we're having you. They know what I, you I look like. They uh, they want to see you. All right, cool. Well, I want to see you. All right. Uh, in closing, I just want to say that I mean, I've really, really, really enjoyed hanging out with you guys. I, I look at you both as truly two, two of my closest fr friends in this profession. I got right there with Brad Glowacki and just a few other people. I, I can hang out with you guys and I can be myself. And I, I just want to really throw a huge amount of love and thanks to both of you for everything that you've done for me, for, my, for both my brothers and Dr. Steve and my practice. And just the fact that, you know, that we can be friends and, and go through this journey of life together and help others be better chiropractors that we can save the planet. I'm just throwing you a huge hug and loves, and I can't wait to see you. you got to come out here for band practice, though, one time. We'll look at February 6th and 7th for that, right? Yeah, man. I, I'll be there, man. I, and I totally appreciate everything you do, Billy. Uh, that shout-out means the world to us, so I really, really appreciate that. All right, brother. God bless, and I will talk to you on the flip side, brother. Okay. Peace, and in brother. closing, rock and roll. All right, let me get that on the screen there. Now you're teaching me how to use Skype. Yeah, I'm not good at Skype yet. All right, I'm getting better. i got to get my face in the picture there. <laughs> with, my, with my giant's hat on. <laughs>